people, did you know, and I didn't, that there was a manned space program in the US run by the Air Force prior to Gemini and Mercury? No. Well, today, in a fascinating article called A Darker Shade of Blue, good title, by Dwayne Day in The Space Review, a recently declassified U.S. Air Force document reveals that possibly American humans went into space in the late 50s before the manned NASA missions. And the way that this story came out is brilliant. It's just the kind of thing that I love. And it's just the way I research stuff. So Dwayne was talking to this older guy who worked for iTech. Now, iTech make spy cameras, big aperture film cameras for the NRA, NSA, CIA, you know, at the time in the 50s that were sent up on converted ICBMs with cameras in them that would fly over the Ruskies and take pictures. And of course, they had to build fantastic optical instruments. And iTech were asked to build this new camera and they were given the design parameters of the rocket it would fit in. And they were told it was going to be pressurized. No need to make a camera that works in a vacuum. And the guy went, well, why would you pressurize an ICBM capsule? Oh, we can't tell you. And that's how it came out. When the plans were revealed, there was a man taking the pictures. The Air Force knew that humans were good at fixing things that go wrong, pointing cameras at things of interest. You needed a man in space for spy work, never mind just science. So today I'm going to share with you, for the first time ever seen on the internet, the drawings, the cartoon drawings that the Air Force did of their darker shade of blue, early manned space program. Enjoy. In 1958, before the creation of NASA and the start of the Mercury program, the Air Force sponsored the project Man in Space, Soonest, or MISS. As part of MISS, aerospace contractor Lockheed Martin proposed a spacecraft five feet in diameter to carry a single astronaut into orbit. The proposed spacecraft would have written atop the Atlas Agena launch vehicle. This information was totally secret until the Air Force hired the iTech Corporation to build a high-powered camera system for a spacecraft. They designed their Samos E5. But the camera's designer, Jack Herther, was puzzled that it was specified to fit inside a pressurized container. What Herther and his fellow iTech engineers did not realize was that their camera was not the driving factor in the development of this new mission. General Bernard Schriever, the legendary head of Ballistic Missile Division, had specified the Samos camera was to go inside a pressurized Air Force spacecraft that was large enough to carry a human. There is no evidence that this really took place. We do know that the Air Force soon realized it would take over three years to get an Air Force officer up into space. By 1962, a new program had been developed, U.S. Air Force named Blue Gemini Mission. All the public was ever told was Alan Shepard 
was the first American in space. But was he?